Okay, we got a bunch of noops this week. Starting off, we have this PDM microphone with a JST-SH cable attachment. We already had a PDM mic in the store for a through-hole solder attachment, but we wanted one that you can easily connect to a cable. And you already had these cables in for connecting to our like I2C quick boards. Um, this is not an I2C board, but it has a data and clock pin. So that made it kind of convenient. So if you want to have a PDM microphone that you can easily attach to a cable, uh, this is it. Uh, we have PDM support code for CircuitPython and Arduino M0 and I think M4, but not all chips support PDM. Like you definitely can't do it on like a 328. So just make sure that your chip can support PDM input uh, before you pick up this mic and try to wire it up. Next up. Next up. Feather floats its way to Seed, where they've got a Grove Shield feather wing. I mean, they call it for wheel light because it's their brand of the feathers. But basically, it's a feather uh, Grove adapter wing, under wing thing. And I'll show this off. It's kind of nice. It uh, will fit any of our feathers. And it um, gives you a nice collection of Grove connectors. So this is... It. So you just plug in your feather here and it's got, you know, the main row and then it's got an extra row, which is kind of nice. And then it has all the pins labeled. Uh, the pin labeling that's used is the pin numbering on like the feather M0, M4, NR52840 and uh, uh, 32U40. Not all feathers, especially others from other companies or ESP32, don't have the exact same pin numbering. So just watch out for that. Like the connections are fine. But, you know, for example, here it says D5, D6, D9, D10. That matches 5, 6, 9, 10 on this feather, but not all feathers have that exact same pinout. Um, that said, uh, I squared C and SPI and the analog pins are gonna be the same numbering because we always start with A0 through A5, so that makes it easy. And then um, if you have uh, something that has Grove connectors, you can get your Grove cable, you uh, plug it in to the connector here, and then you have quick plug and play connectivity to all sorts of different devices. This is a STEMA board, but it's uh, uh, Grove compatible. And like uh, Seed has like 50 or 100 different Grove devices that you can connect. Sensors, I2C, UART, whatever you want. Um, there's even a switch so you can select between whether you want to have um, five volt or battery to connect to the power pins on the Grove contacts. So this is a great way to um, make a nice plug and play um, configuration for your feather. And if your feather has headers already soldered on, it uh, no soldering required. This comes fully assembled and ready to rock. Next up, we have this book. It is in the store now. Yes, we now have Kathy's book. Uh, it was coming soon, but now it's here. And we put together a pack as well. So if you would like to follow along and make some of the projects, uh, Kathy picked out parts from the Adafruit shop that will let you build a whole bunch of projects uh, from servos and LEDs, uh, batteries, alligator clips, and more. Um, it's not absolutely everything, but it's enough to get you like pretty, pretty close. Like everything we had in the store. So you can do like more than half of the activities uh, to build some of these fun uh, makerspace friendly, no solder robotics and electronics projects. We have a USB-C FTDI cable. We, this is one of our first products we've stocked was the FTDI cable and uh, time moves forward and, and we must keep up. Um, now we have a USB-C cable version. Um, this is a three volt FTDI cable. So the power and logic is both 3.3 volts. Um, but it'll work with the vast majority of, of uh, devices that need um, to connect to an FTDI cable. Um, and what's nice is of course it's reversible uh, so we're starting off with, you know, we've got like a hundred of these cables and we're going to try them out. Uh, so far, so good. They've worked on all the USB-C computers we've tried, um, but we're going to slowly get more and more USB-C cables in as we transition from USB-A and micro-B to USB-C. Um, from Pimeroni, we now have the uh, Pibo Coupe for the uh, Raspberry Pi 4. So the 4 came out and the Pi 4 is a complete change mechanically from the Pi 3 and Pi 2. So uh, we are now stocking this case, which is a slimline case, only has five layers, um, but that's good because it means you can easily attach hats or bonnets on top and you can see there's even holes 
here so you can uh, screw them in. I have it actually with the fan shim attached, but I can, I can remove that to show. Uh, so this is for the Pi 4 only. We have separate cases if you want for the Pi 3s and such, and these have nice labeling for, you know, what is the micro HDMI and the USB-C power requirements. And it has a cutout again for their fan shim, which we'll show off in a moment. Um, but for your uh, Pi 4, there is no more colorful case than this, by far. The most colorful. Okay. Um, and that, no tools required. The thing that you just showed was yes. on top of it. So this is the fan shim. So if you have a Pi 4, it's a very powerful computer and it's got a uh, heat spreader on the top of the chip. But if you're doing something that has a lot of computational needs, and that would be like machine learning or really intense emulation or some sort of data processing, something where the process, all four processors are going at full speed, um, you will see a slowdown when it overheats. Um, you won't, you'll never be able to damage your Pi from overheating, but what can happen is as the processor gets hotter and hotter, it'll start throttling itself. It'll start slowing down so that it doesn't end up um, getting above a certain temperature. Or what you can do is put a heat sink or a fan on top. And so this fan shim is a lovely little easy plug and play thing. You get it in two pieces and you just, you know, screw the, um, you get some screws and you just attach the fan on. And then it just plugs uh, right onto the Raspberry Pi. And I think I need to reset it because it's probably unhappy but it will um, start spinning. And then there's also a Python script that you can run that will um, monitor the, the speed. Actually, no, I think, there you go, it was a little bit too, too low. It'll monitor the temperature and if it gets too high, it'll turn the fan on. Right now it's not doing anything so the fan isn't spinning. But if um, I'm running some machine learning thing or emulation, it'll turn on and will turn off when it's not in use. There's also a side button that when you're running the script, if you press the button, it'll automatically turn on or off. And there's a little RGB LED that will tell you the status as well. So it's a really quiet little fan, um, but great for adding um, quick cooling. And they have some cool thermal images that they took as well um, that we'll add to the product guide. But basically you can run it at full speed, all four cores, as long as you want, as long as you have a fan on. All right, next up. Uh, next up, we have the indoor gateway from the Things Network. So we stopped the really big, very fancy Things Network gateway. It's a couple hundred dollars. And if you want to uh, run a gateway that's smaller and more affordable, this one is under a hundred bucks. And it is, uses, I think, an ESP32 or 8266 as the Wi-Fi gateway. And then it has an eight channel LoRa transceiver. So it's actually all eight channels, which is really nice. Usually you can't get an eight channel transceiver for um, this price. And uh, what's really neat about the design is it's got like on the back this, um, uh, this little um, like adjustable um, plug adapter. So if you wanted to use it in like Europe or the UK, of course you use different plugs, but in the US you use um, the US plugs that ours comes with, and then you just plug it into the wall and you're ready to rock. Like after you've configured it, um, it's got a power adapter in it to safely convert the power down. And then here is the um, uh, wireless Wi-Fi module here with antenna. And on the other side, uh, the LoRa, I think this is like a LoRa plug-in module that gives you that eight channel um, LoRa gateway. And it's USB-C powered. So if you don't want to plug it into the, into the wall, you can also just power it over USB-C. We got this set up in a couple minutes with the Things Network. So it's definitely like the most affordable eight channel gateway. And it'll work with all of our LoRa boards. We've got, you know, feathers and hats uh, for Raspberry Pis and breakouts and shields and all that good stuff for you to connect sensors to this gateway. And then this gateway will take the LoRa data and transmit it to the Things Network where you can um, plot it or do more with your data. So this is a, a good, base for an indoor sensor network. Okay, and the stars of the show tonight, besides the community and New Lady Ada, are two products. Take it away, two products. Two products, so you've got an update. Some people are like, hey, could you get the Promo Proto 
Pi boards updated for the 2x20 because I, I released these back when it was 2x13. And uh, I finally was like, yeah, I should really do that. So I did that a couple years later, but I did do it. Um, so we've got the Perma Protos that people love, but they're designed for use with the Raspberry Pi. So what we did is, um, as uh, the lovely photo shows, um, it's the same size as a full-size breadboard. And you get 60 total rows, but the first 20 rows are actually set up to have this 2x20 IDC connector soldered in. And then you get four pins to connect to. And so you can solder wires from here or to the grounds. And each one is labeled with the matching Raspberry Pi pin number. So, you know, MOSI, MISO, S-Clock, uh, GPIO numbers and grounds and such. And then you can wire them up however you like, as if it was a breadboard and soldered in. So we've got it as These a full handy. size. Yes, very handy. Um, you get it as a full size, and we also have it as a half size. The half size, of course, does not have as much space as the full size, but uh, it's still enough to do some basic little circuitry. And then, you know, you take your Raspberry Pi of any kind, Pi 4, Pi 0, whatever, you plug in um, this handy 2x20 cable and Adafruit Black, and then you just plug it in like so, and it's keyed, yeah. and uh, Bob's mm -hmm. your uncle. That's it. And then you can just, wire, you know, you, when you want to solder to it, you unplug the cable, and when you want it to uh, be ready for using again, you plug it back in. So it's very easy, but people really like these, and I kind of forgot to update these to 2 by 20 but now I did. So good job, me. Okay. Ready for a recap? It's time for a recap. Recap time. Recap, recap, recap. Okay, we got the PDM microphone, uh, just like the other PDM mic we have, but this time it has a cable attachment, so you can connect a JSTSH cable if you'd like for remote PDM microphoning. This is from Seed. It's a Grove feather wing shield. Uh, they designed it for the Wii O Lite, but you can use it with any feather, really. Plug it in, and you get 10 Grove connectors and a voltage selection switch. The uh, Kathy Cesari Bots book is in stock very shortly, if not today, then tomorrow or someday soon. And we also have a pack that goes with it with uh, Circuit Playground and LEDs and batteries and motors, so you could build the projects in the book as well. We now have a USB-C version of the ubiquitous FTDI cable. This version has 3-volt power and 3-volt logic uh, and a USB-C connector so you can use it with modern computers. From Pymarone, we now have their uh, rainbow Pi bow for Pi 4. It's a five layer, beautiful rainbow case for the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, it protects, it attacks, it allows you to use the fan chim, and it has like slots for the uh, Pi hats. So it's a really uh, well designed case um, that lets you easily attach more hardware to your Raspberry Pi. Speaking of stuff you want to attach on top, they also sent us some. Fan shims. This fan shim is designed for the Pi 4, but will also, of course, work with the Pi 3 or Pi 2, although you need it the most with the Pi 4 when you're doing a lot of computational, intense computations. I don't know. Uh, if you're getting all four cores running at full speed uh, so that it doesn't throttle, put the fan shim on, run the script, and when it starts to get close to overheating, boom, the fan kicks on and cools you right back down. The uh, Things, the Things Network TTN indoor router is an eight channel LoRaWAN router with a Wi-Fi gateway so you can get your um, LoRaWAN network connected and forwarding data up to the Things Network online. And it's the most affordable router they've made yet. And it's so handy, it even has a little plug. You can plug it right into the wall outlet using the handy adaptable wall outlet plug thingy on the back. And uh, you can basically make any home a LoRaWAN home. Updated for the Raspberry Pi modern 2x20 connectors, we now have the PermaPi, the PermaProto Raspberry Pi adapters that are designed specifically for use with Raspberry Pi because they've got that 2x20 IDC connector you solder in, has all the labels, uh, all the pins labeled, and you have some prototyping area as well. So perfect for making um, add-on hardware for your Raspberry Pi. That's that was it. new products. A lot of new products.